here we have a mass. I think this was from a 25-year-old uh, uh, patient, and it was in their arm. So it's very blue and cellular. And look, it's got fascicles of spindle cells, and it's got areas of herringbone pattern. Looks quite a lot like that synovial sarcoma I just showed you, in this area at least, okay? The one thing though that stands out, and it's kind of subtle, particularly this case is tricky, but there is a bit of pleomorphism here. So with practice, I think that you can begin to recognize that this tumor looks a bit different than synovial sarcoma. But I remember as a fellow, I thought that's impossible. I cannot tell them apart. And then over time, I learned some features that helped me. But this tumor right here is a malignant peripheral nerve sheath tumor. It is another tumor that's well known for making a uh, fascicular cellular fascicles with a herringbone architecture. But there are some other features that it has that can help you make the diagnosis. And of course, immunohistochemically, um, uh, we can sort this out too when needed. So the uh, one thing we have is in addition to the herringbone fascicles, look what we have here. We have other areas that are less cellular and more mixoid. The marbling or swirling together of cellular fascicular areas and loose, less cellular mixoid areas is very typical of malignant peripheral nerve sheath tumor. Additionally, you'll often find a lot of necrosis. And you can have necrosis in a lot of different sarcomas, including synovial, but having these big zones of necrosis in the middle of the tumor, that's a very common feature um, in malignant peripheral nerve sheath tumor, MPNST is the abbreviation for that, or the acronym for it. The, um, in MPNST, the um, necrosis sometimes is very like geographic. You have these huge seas of necrosis and then islands of viable tumor kind of in the middle of all of this abundant necrosis. It varies from case to case. Um, the other thing I was gonna point out is this, and this is a trick Dr. Weiss taught me, and I have found this to be incredibly, um, incredibly useful. Um, that in MPNST, you often have around the vessels, you'll see epithelioid, I am sorry that this thing keeps popping up here. How do I get, give me one second. All right, thank you. The, um, in, um, around the vessels, you have enlarged epithelioid change of the tumor cells that cluster around dilated vascular spaces. You can see it right here around these vessels, around these, around these. And Dr. Weiss said that she found that to be a very common feature in MPNST. And I have over time in the past 10 years of practice um, or so, I've, I found that to be very useful and helpful. And look, more pleomorphism here. This is a lot more pleomorphism than I'd like to see for a synovial sarcoma. Synovial sarcoma is usually very, very uniform because it's translocation associated. So when you see that vascular change in a cellular spindle cell sarcoma, always think of MPNST. Not a totally specific finding, but a very useful clue. Um, okay, so that's another thing. And then look, these areas much more mixoid and loose here. More mixoid, see how the mixoid marbles together with the spindle areas. And then, oh, what's this? Well, those are axons. This is a big, deep nerve cut in cross section. And the tumor here is growing out of the nerve. So the most important thing I think to make, because uh, MPNST doesn't have any one specific feature, it is a constellation of different features that help us to think of the diagnosis and arrive at it, okay? So all the stuff I just talked to you about, looking for any combination of those should always make you think of MPNST, but what really defines it? Well, the best ways historically to define MPNST and the way I still think is a very, very practical way to approach it is if you have a sarcoma that has some of these features, then ideally you wanna have one of three things be true. It is arising from a nerve. You can see it growing out of the nerve either microscopically or in imaging studies. Number two, it is growing out of a background neurofibroma, usually a big, deep, plexiform neurofibroma. Or number three, it is a sarcoma that looks like this arising in a patient with known neurofibromatosis type one, NF1. So if you have a sarcoma and one of those three things is true, is a very good chance that it's a malignant peripheral nerve sheath tumor, okay? And more recently, there is a stain that can be very helpful and it's called H3K27ME3. And I know that's hard. I had to practice it a lot of times before I could get it to roll off my tongue. It's a histone methylating protein and it tends to be, it stains the nuclei of most tumors, but it's lost. The expression of it is lost in the majority of MPNSTs, especially in MPNSTs, it seems like that are outside of the setting of NF1. And that's really helpful because outside of NF1 is when it's really hard to make the diagnosis of MPNST. It's an important thing to, an important tumor to recognize because these are 
quite aggressive and, and unfortunately often have a bad prognosis. So um, it is good to know about. But here, this tumor was actually growing out of the nerve. And I'll show you in a minute, there's actually a neurofibroma here too in another section. So it was growing out of the plexiform um, neurofibroma and this patient did indeed have neurofibromatosis type one, unfortunately. So a bad high grade sarcoma that unfortunately afflicts a significant subset of patients with NF1. One of the many reasons that NF1 is a very terrible disease and a very serious diagnosis to make. And this is why you should be very cautious about making a diagnosis of plexiform neurofibroma. I have a whole video about that and another video about MPNST. Pretty soon I'll have videos about everything and then I'll just won't tell people I have videos, they'll just assume yes, there's a video for it. But in any case, it's important because when you tell someone they've got a plexiform NF, you're basically giving the patient NF1 and this is the risk that comes with NF1. So really, and not to mention the 50% chance of passing it on to kids, it's a really serious diagnosis to make. So I never ever make a diagnosis of plexiform neurofibroma lightly. I basically want it to be definitively plexiform or obviously the patient has NF1 based on clinical workup. All right. So here's more of that marbling with the myxoid area. Really, really great example of that. And I think this one, I can't remember. I saw earlier, I was looking at the slide. I suspect this one may have a little area of malignant, um, of, uh, see these big cells? They're kind of uh, big pink epithelioid cells. I bet if we stained this, and I can't remember if we had done that on this case or not because it was a long time ago, but I suspect these would be positive for Desmond and myogenin, that these are probably rhabdomyoblastic differentiation in an MPNST. And when we see that, we call that malignant triton tumor. It doesn't make any um, difference in the treatment or the prognosis to my knowledge. It is uh, useful to know though, because sometimes when you have a lot of that, um, if, if uh, somehow if the patient's history is not known, a future biopsy might um, end in a misdiagnosis of, of rhabdomyosarcoma rather than, than MPNST. But in any case, it's kind of more of a pathologic curiosity in all honesty, uh, rather than something that's needed for patient care. All right, so I've put several slides you can go explore. This slide shows pretty much all the features here. Here's another view of the same thing. You can see there, this was the plexiform neurofibroma. And so that's why we have areas that look kind of like nerve and areas that are more um, collagen, little, little shreds of collagen. And we saw some residual nerve fibers and then, but it's all been overrun by the MPNST is growing out of it. Again, more myxoid change in here. And up here, another branch of that same large nerve, okay? Here's a good view of that nerve. And more of the same, and then I think on this last one, yes, here you can see this is the plexiform neurofibroma growing out of and expanding the nerve. Remember, it arises from the nerve, fills the nerve, and then kind of distorts the nerve over time. So you're still going to find background nerve fibers running through the midst of a plexiform neurofibroma. It's just the nerve is way bigger and way more convoluted than usual because it's been distorted and filled by the the, the neurofibroma. And then over here, it transitioned into the obvious high-grade sarcoma. You can see here's like neurofibroma here, and then transitioning into the high, the high-grade malignant areas with big pleomorphic cells and mitoses. Oh, and the last thing, I like to harp on this a lot it, because there's a huge misconception that it's neural, so it should be positive for S100 or SOX10. In my experience, most of the time, you're either going to have totally negative SOX10 and S100 in a malignant peripheral nerve sheet tumor or only weak patchy staining, okay? There are some rare exceptions. And over time, I think some of the clones of S100 we're using have gotten stronger maybe. So there have been some rare times, but in general, do not expect to see strong and diffuse staining for S100 or SOX10 in a malignant peripheral nerve sheet tumor, okay? And if you do see something that you think looks like an MPNST and is strongly and diffusely S100 or SOX10 positive, that to me is I'm going to have to rule out melanoma before I ever call something MPNST, especially if you're in the skin. MPNSTs almost never occur in the skin, even in patients with NF1. I have only seen one example ever that I think had to be a true MPNST in the skin based on its staining pattern and appearance. Um, but that's the only time, I only one time ever. Um, so, but I have seen many, many times where people sent cases and said, I'm sure this is MPNST on the scalp of an 80 year old man. It's spindled and it's strongly positive for S100. And I was like, nope, that's a spindle cell melanoma. So I, I feel like that's an area that people are very confused about. And again, as you can tell, it's an issue I'm very passionate about. You can go watch my long MPNST video if you're curious um, to learn more. All right, so we have talked about that case ad nauseum, but it's an important and complicated topic that needs coverage.